Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now this next pattern is number 21 in the Great Smoky Mountain series. This is Charlie's Whopper. Now the Charlie in the name is Charles Messer from Fines Creek, North Carolina. Now I couldn't figure out the year this pattern originated, but it looks to be as old as the 1940s. Tied in the bigger sizes, it could be part stimulator, part stonefly. It can be very effective in the early spring. Now tie it in the smaller sizes, it could be a generic mayfly, effective any time of year. The defining traits of this fly are an upright divided bronze mallard wing and a bronze mallard down wing. Now it's not too hard of a fly to tie. I think most beginners can handle this one. Let's give it a shot. There it is in the vise, Charlie's Whopper. You can see the main component really is the bronze mallard flank. It's in the upright wing and the swept wing and just a few slivers for a tail there. So this can be tied as big as a 10, probably down to about a 16 might be workable. This is a size 12. It's a 1x long dry fly hook. I'm going to use black 70 denier UTC and I'll lay a base and leave my thread hanging at about the one third point. This first component we're going to do is going to be the upright wing. So for the wing, take a bronze mallard flank feather. And if you don't have bronze, use, use whatever you got. And just, just pull some out perpendicular to the stem, a, a fair size chunk about like that. Okay. Now, I'm not too worried about the, the ends being even. If there's some really small ones, I'll just go ahead and pull them out. But your thread is hanging where we're going to tie it in. Now, envision flipping it up and checking your length. That is about the length we want. It's going to be about the top of the top of the hackle. So let's go ahead and catch this in. Now this really just provides a little sliver of a wing. It's not very prominent in the fly. So just a couple of wraps to get that caught in. I'll lift this at about a 45 degree angle, put my scissors parallel and cut it right there. That gives you a little bit of a, a taper to go ahead and wrap that back in. So we've got a fairly smooth taper right there. Take your thread back up here behind the wing and just lift them up and build a dam right behind them. Now I don't sweat these wings too much and I don't put a whole lot of effort into them. In fact, you could probably leave them out and the fly would fish about just the same. But the original pattern calls for them, so I will use them. Now I'll split them close to half and half, as close as I can get to it. And then I'll just do maybe two X wraps right here. So there's one, and there's another. So I've got them mostly standing upright and split. You can see that. Now let's take our thread back to the bend of the hook, and we'll grab that same mallard flank feather. And this time, just take maybe four barbs. Not much. It's a just a small sliver of a tail. And it's not very long. So if, if you find them splitting up on you like that, just roll them between your thumb and finger and that should get them laying together. So measure about a hook gap. And I think that's going to be fine right there. I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Reach in here and just snip this tiny little tail off. And if you need to, even this out right here. See, I've got a little lull between where I caught those feathers in and the front. So I'll just throw a few extra thread wraps down right here. Maybe I can even that out a little bit. Now let's let's do the dubbing on this. Almost like an old Adams, it is muskrat. Now if you don't have muskrat, 
use gray something. Use gray rabbit, gray synthetic, whatever you got. I just take a little piece of this muskrat right here, and you can see it, it's it's brown, but the under fur is just totally light gray and gray. When you cut a slip out and just roll, pull the guard hairs out, and then what's left is just this under fur. So you've got the thread waxed, and then I will put just a small, fairly thin noodle on right here, wrap it fairly tight. And you'll notice my thread is just a little bit in front of the bend of the hook because I'm not going to wrap the dubbing all the way up there. And the first couple of thread wraps is going to be bare thread getting me back to where the dubbing will start. See what I'm talking about right here? A couple of thread wraps there. And now we're at the back and our dubbing is starting. So time that and plan that and you will have a smoother body. So just wrap this as smooth as you can up to the back of these wings. Now typically we like to get a taper on these, but on this one I don't as much because I want this, this mallard flank back wing to lay flatter than sticking upright. If I had a big big taper and a thick thorax up there, then this part of the wing might be sticking upright. And I don't really want that. Now again, this wing isn't too big. Probably a little bit more than we did for the the upright wing. A little more substantial. Maybe that right there. Um, and if they're going all over on the all over the place on you, just spin them in your fingers until you get something that you think is going to look right. Okay, I think that's going to be fine right there. So the length is going to be a little bit past the bend of the hook, maybe almost to the end of that tail. I will catch this in, a little pinch wrap right there, maybe two wraps, and check my position. Okay, now I like that wing right there, so I'm going to go ahead and secure it in with a couple more wraps. And you can help, you can build a little bit of a base right behind these upright wings because we're going to wrap the hackle all the way back to there. Okay, so that back wing is caught in pretty well. Tricky part here, grab this middle wing without grabbing your upright wings and snip it off. Okay, now let's check our orientation right now. The wings are still coming off the side and this swept back wing is positioned okay there. So if you need to do any rearranging of these front wings, now would be the time to do that. I think those are fine where they are right now. And like many Smoky Mountain flies, the hackle is a brown and grizzly. Now one thing I like to do with the brown and grizzly on all these, my brown feather, I will, I will pick it a size smaller than the, the grizzly. I think it just looks a little bit better. That makes the grizzly makes the grizzly a little more prominent, but it does give you that hint of brown closer to the body, closer to the the hook. So let's secure that with a few wraps behind it. Take it up here and a few wraps in front. Now I've got some long stems right here, excess I will need to reach in and trim. If you timed it right or, or sized it right, you might end up not having to trim those, but I did and that's fine. Okay. Also, a lot of folks will wrap these and say, oh, you need to wrap your grizzly and your brown one at a time. And sometimes I do, but usually I don't. Usually I grab them both and wrap them both at the same time. So you see that first wrap, it is going a little bit over that back wing. I'm going to do two or three wraps behind it, then probably at least four in front. That's three up front. Let's go with four. I think that's going to be, won't be too bushy. It is a bushy fly though, so don't be afraid to, to put a lot of hackle up here. Okay two wraps to secure that 
and I'm going to go ahead and pull this back and start my head before I snip off this brown and grizzly. Sometimes it just will help you to keep it a little bit cleaner. So just a few more wraps right here to lock that. Don't go too far back. We still want these fibers to be perpendicular to the hook. So before I let go of these, I'll reach in here and snip a couple of the wayward fibers right there. And now we can whip finish without those getting in our way. And then as one of the last steps, go in there and trim that excess hackle fi feathers. So I'm not putting any head cement on these. Now you can, I probably have room on this one. I've just been two, doing two whip finishes. Now I'll reach in here, don't snip thread, just poke it. And spin it around so I can pull these out kind of perpendicular, get my scissors in here, and then you are gonna have to snip this, but you don't wanna snip any of the hackle that you still want. So there it is, Charlie's Whopper. Charlie Messer pattern, uh, pretty cool fly, pretty buggy fly, very high floater. Anyway, folks, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.